everyone and welcome greetings welcome to week 10 hostos beginners class painting and drawing vpa 121 and congratulations to all of you who are producing such magnificent results some truly breathtaking paintings of skills that would just astonish you, you know, and it's going to be great. Now, just before we start, this week, some of you will have received this already. If you haven't, within about 10 days from seeing this videotape, let me know and I'll send out another, well, send me by text or by email your name and address and I will send it out again. Basically what's being sent out is this, it's an envelope, I have your name on it and it's got my return address. Inside the envelope is a postcard with a stamp already on it, which I've provided, and it's got my address on it. And it also has a piece of paper, which has an explanation of the male art exercise. Uh, do the drawing on the postcard. Now, the instructions for it go like this, okay? <laughs> Choose any object, close to you, a pen, a chair, a cup, here's an artist's knife, anything, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be something crazy, complicated. Or a plant and explore it visually with pen or pencil. So just get into it and start working around. Don't worry about it being good or bad. Just explore it as if you're going on a journey. Look at it with great interest and almost curiosity. Avoid any objects with strong personal associations that remind you of the past, because you want to work in the now, not always thinking about the past. Avoid anything that has writing on it, such as a book or a bottle. Nothing that stimulates thought. Without straining, relax by alert, but alert. Give your complete attention to the object every detail of it so that you're meditating and when you're meditating you're doing your best not to constantly worry about or regret about the past and not to worry about the future but just to be in the moment that's meditation and this is drawing meditation okay if thoughts arise so if you're thinking and your thoughts, worries and things arise, don't get involved in them. Just let them be there, you know, like as if it was um, wind or a dog or a noise in the background, you know, just let it be there. Uh, it is not the thoughts you're interested in, but the act of perception, the act of seeing itself. So the thoughts are not important. It's your seeing that's important. Can one take the thinking out of the perceiving? Can you look and draw without the voice in your head commenting? Okay, that's important if you're going to be able to see the reality there. Uh, especially in these days, you know, we've got less things to occupy us than we usually have because of the general shutdown of society. So it's important to have ways of escaping from the voice inside your head. If you can do this once a week and create a drawing based on your work, you will become more aware and alert to things around you. Your drawing will improve as you become less self-conscious. Self-conscious, always thinking about yourself, always worrying about yourself, really obsessed with yourself and there's the other side of it is conscious of self. That means you can see yourself for what you are, not always worrying about what others think you are or what you want to be, but
but really aware of who you are, and that's important. But don't be too self-conscious, super critical on yourself. Um, you will become more aware and calm as you draw what you see without being distracted by overthinking. So it's a double exercise. It's to help you to calm the mind, and it's also going to be posted back to me. Please don't forget to put your name on it. I didn't mention that on the piece of paper, but at least so I know who has done each piece of artwork. Please make sure that you put your name on it. That would be extremely helpful because once they all come back, or at least most of them come back, I'll put them up on the wall or hold them in front of the camera and we'll have a little uh, YouTube exhibition uh, and your good name is going to get mentioned. So if you if you don't want your name mentioned, let me know. I won't put it in then, but there's no harm in it. You know, and it'll be a nice online exhibition of your artwork in this mail art thing. So you just send that back to me, nice and easy. So that's, that's a nice thing um, that is going to be done. And once you do it, get it back to me. Make sure, you know, it, it's... Um, sent in the next few weeks you know if you're not doing it too quickly but um, make sure it's back by the end of the semester at least so I can put these up so back to the painting now last week we're gonna kind of like work on this thing uh, some of you are really almost there already but I'll just go over it again this week um, we had the color set up on the palette and I mentioned, you know, here they are for the skins and the flesh. And I've got them going from the lighter to the darker colors here, round in the palette. And you can see I put like at least like a right about an inch between the colors. So I've got white, yellow, yellow ochre, and that's a kind of mustard brownish yellow, uh, red, I put a dark red here. This is called crimson. If you have that amongst your tubes of paint, you can use that as, as well as a darker red to give you more tones with the red. So I've added that extra color this week, okay? Then I've got the two browns. I've got the dark brown and the red brown. Burnt umber, burnt sienna. You, I don't know, if you might have both. You might just have one, doesn't matter, but there they are, I've put both of them, and black. So that's the whole series of colors. And um, I'm just doing this weekly with you. So we have, the last week I'd done this in the 20 minutes, which was working the skin on top of the um, face that we'd done with the shadows. And you remember the shadows colors were black, white, and brown. And those were like shadows, like underpainting, um, the kind of structure underneath the skin before we put the flesh on, okay? So I'm just gonna take the old brush again and uh, see if I can mix up something here. What I need is a rag of some sort. I'll just use this. So again, in the center here, mix up whatever you feel is your shade. going to apply that onto the uh... oh and you've got your two things of water remember clean water and dirty water and I've put some in these little things here so I can use it so it's basically you know by the time we get to this stage it's really just keeping working at it and uh, building up parts that are needing development and uh, taking away from the other parts. Uh, actually, the weird thing is the light has changed. <laughs> the light has changed from when I did this last week. I've got the light on this side now, so I'm kind of, oh my God, never mind. That's the thing about, if you work from a photograph, it's always the same, but if you're working for life, it's always changing.
Now, I'm just going to go through this quite slowly for you. You can see it. Do some bits in here. See, so you can see I'm putting the skin on like that. You see that okay? Try and twist it around. If one of you lived nearby and there was no coronavirus, I'd have you working for me as the camera person. You could move this camera around. So I'm just putting this chin on here just now. You can see I'm just going back and forth. I've got the base colour of the uh, face here and then I'm going and I'm putting little bits of darker shades here under the lip and here and here. So you really are just, you know, after that loose beginning, sharpening it up now. See, I'm doing that light around the chin here. Okay. I mean, for some of you, this will be bamboozling, but for some of you, this will be just like a duck to water. You know, some people can swim really good, just naturally. Some people never learn how to swim. It's the same with painting, you know, no matter how much the... Uh, try it just doesn't so I'm blending that in now you can see that after doing those initial lumps of paint in there I'm smoothing it out and blending to get the tones all put together I mean, most of painting is really about blending you're taking colors, you're putting them on fairly, fairly loose. I mean, I'm not saying it's, uh, you're not putting it on just like as if you don't care, but you're putting it on fairly loose. Look at this around the mouth here now. See, I'm putting that light around the top of the lip. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. And then you're just going in and blending that together. So once again, you know, I'm using a just I'm just using two brushes at this beginning, just this more detailed brush and this thicker, harder brush for blending. If any of you are interested in the music, we are listening to the African-American classical pianist and his name is Cecil Little. I think it's spelled L-Y-T-T-L-E. And this particular piece of music is called uh, Seekers of the Truth. And I like that title. So Cecil Little. You might, I think he was actually a um, professor of music in California as well and a, a great, great pianist. I have a lot of his um, work. Seekers of the Truth. I like that. Under the nose, I'm going to just put that shadow. And what I'm going to do is just kind of work a bit here just now and uh, try and concentrate on it while you watch. See how I'm doing that? Now don't forget, when it dries, you can work in again on things that have gone wrong and fix them. 
you know, so it's never over until it's over. You're always working, repairing, fixing, you know, making it something that speaks to you, you know, and it takes time for a painting to speak. I mean, it's like, you know, bringing a baby to life. At the beginning, the baby doesn't speak. You know, that would be scary. It'd be like one of those old films with John Travolta, the look who's talking where the baby, the baby can speak, but uh, thankfully they can't speak. So at the beginning it doesn't speak, but as it comes to life, it gets older. You know, it starts to speak, it says whatever you're going through. Mine is, mine is looking kind of tense, but I think that's just, you know, the circumstances of life right now are kind of tense. And you can't escape. What I love about painting, I think it's the main thing about it. it you know, it's really about what's inside you. You can't escape the shadows that are inside you and there's no point in trying to escape them because they're part of you and a lot of creativity is in the shadows. So, you know, the shadows will come out, the uh, feelings, you know, and when they're out, they're out. There's nothing wrong with them. It's just our judgments that make them wrong. You just release them and uh, that's it. Like I said, you're not really your thoughts. I mean, they're just your thoughts. You, know, you don't have to make them into such a big deal. I know that's easier said than done, but that's, I think that's the beauty of art. It helps you to have a way through what normal people struggle with. So I'm blending in all the time. I'm using just those colors and back and forth with this brush. Use this guy here. I'm trying to cram this all into, uh, well, what probably seems to you like quite a long videotape, but uh, in actual fact, when your painting is quite short, darker under the eyes. Poor man hasn't been sleeping right. <laughs>
So you're going to end up using all those brushes that uh, you managed to get from Blick because there was about uh, 12 brushes in that set. You know, it's a good set and you need it. See how I'm going back and forth here. Look how many I'm holding in my hand here painting. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight brushes. So far, I'm on the, I've been painting this now for 12 minutes. I mean, I know the tape says something like 20, but that was me talking about the uh, the other thing. So, you know, you can see why on YouTube they always speed up. You know, when they show you how to paint, they speed it up like you know, like no one's business with a fast camera and uh, it looks so easy you know but actually you know it's not that easy because you have to do it and uh, if you don't speed it up it looks uh, it looks like a lot more work <laughs> Remember I told you about the ears, I haven't even bothered about these ears, so don't worry about the ears. <laughs> Remember I said you don't need to do the dark background, I'm just doing this, you know, for the demonstration's sake, but, uh, you know, it helps the face to pop, but you might not want to do the dark background. It's up to you. can use the finger wash them afterwards you'll be all right it's non-toxic That's coming up for 25 minutes, so I'm going to probably stop it there. And actually, you know, I've only spent a tiny fraction of it doing this painting. Because I know how boring it is watching somebody painting. But hopefully you're learning something from this and seeing the hand doing the blending and all that business. Okay, so I'm just going to look at the mouth before we go because some of you were talking about the mouth. I'm going to go back into it. And of course, there's tons of stuff you can do. I mean, I really am just going over this very quickly um, so that the videos don't last for an eternity. But I'm going to go into that lip. Just kind of use the reds and browns. Shape it up a little bit more. So I'm 
using the smaller brush here just to kind of get that nice. And then the bottom lip, a little bit bigger. So it's a kind of, there's more, a little bit more brownish red in the lips than in the rest of the face so that they have that darker color. But your lips might look uh, lighter than the rest of your face. I mean, all it all depends on your complexion, you know, it's, uh, everyone's different. And that's the great thing about painting. It captures the beauty of humanity and all its differences. See how I'm doing it? Just add a little bit in there, blend it in with another brush. Obviously it is work, you know, it's not just uh, coming out of you like a machine or like a, a photocopy. You know, you have to concentrate and do it. And you will make mistakes, but do not become disheartened. If you're like me, sometimes you become disheartened, but if you push through the pain, you'll come out the other side and you'll be all the stronger for it. So that's the important thing to remember. Do not let yourself become disheartened. That's the ear that I told you, you can just scootle in. Look how I'm scootling, scootling that ear in very quickly. You see, look at that. Just letting it blend in with the background. I'm not really caring that much, you know, I'm just going to let it go there like that. You know. And this one, like I said, no one looks at the ears, you know, unless there's something completely bizarre that you've done with them. They're not things that are noticed. Now, you see, I made that ear too big. I'm just taking some of the background and shrinking it down. Shrinking time. It's all blending, you know, all painting. A wonderful process of blending. Use the larger brush here for the background, you know, just blend in like that. I haven't really touched the neck today because I think we're getting up to quite a long time. What I like about painting is you can never really make a mistake. Like the uh, Bob Ross used to say, they're always happy accidents. And uh, I got a little bit of yellow in there, so that's fine. His skin has got a little bit of yellow in it. You know, there is a little bit of yellow and there's a little bit of red, there's a little bit of brown, there's a little bit of white, there's a little bit of black. They're all going in the skin, you know, and that's the beauty of it. You know, there's no mistakes. There's just getting more into it, you know, and more alive into it. Like right now I am starting to get into this, you know, I wasn't. And once you get into it, if you can get into that place in painting where you're actually starting to forget about yourself and less self-conscious and less worried about it all the time looking good, that's when it will start to look good. It's when you worry about it looking good that it does not look good, strangely enough. And that's a difficult thing to get. Um, if you can get that, if that's all you get from this class, that when you stop worrying about looking good, it will look good. As long as you're worrying about it, that's when it doesn't work. And that's, that's about, I would say, that would be the fundamental lesson that you could bring into anything in your life. It's okay to look not so good and to uh, not understand things and just to be yourself <laughs> well you can see how it's going it's going to build up bit by bit by bit I'm kind of going back and forth here it's taken ages 
This is a knife they use for painting, so you can scrape things with it. Like a kind of painting knife. I mean, there's tons in art I can talk about, you know, and that's why I recommend you do the second class, painting two. Especially if you bought stuff for this, because you can just use all the same stuff again for the next class, next semester. Yeah. I am starting to get into this. I think I'm going to close this off and let this guy build his way up. <laughs> And I haven't really worked on the eyes yet, and they are so important. And until I do, they're not going to really pop. Okay, I can hear my telephone ringing, so I'll leave it for today. Um, envelopes are on their way to you. If they don't arrive within the next uh, 10 days, let me know and I'll send another one. And uh, I want to wish you all the best. This is week 10, Hostos, beginner's class. Starting to do the painting, bring out your face. Try your best. And uh, blending tones and such like. Well, I've done this in 20 minutes and I'm just doing it live in front of you. You know, I, you know, I can do better, of course, but this is just a demonstration. You could beat me, okay? Take care, my friends. Bye for now.